Hello guys. I'm gonna do a little video today on uh, some police radios and how to get on police bands and different types of government bands such as fire and EMS. Uh, generally you can get these radios off eBay. Uh, these radios cover different frequency ranges. Have you noticed that the uh, when you buy these new, these can be up to four or five hundred dollar range. And you notice most of these are not made in a wide frequency range. They're either in the VHF or UHF bands, which is like you know your ultra high frequencies in the four hundred megahertz, and uh, your uh, Your VHF is like in your 100 megahertz range. Well, I'm going to show you today. You can buy these crystals offline. These crystals, when they were shipped, they're putting a piece of cardboard uh, and some tape, as to so they won't get lost. Um, you can replace the the crystals in these uh, to support a broader range frequency band. Uh, that particular crystal I just showed you will cover from 30 megahertz all the way up to 800 megahertz. So you could have a radio that's programmable to uh, several different uh, channels. This is a 16 channel radio. So you could, uh, with your radio software program, your RSS uh, prompt, most of these are running through DOS through a programming cable. You can uh, <clears throat> program these to different frequencies. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing is with the default crystals, you cannot program them uh, to other frequencies that that crystal will not cover or the frequency range it won't cover unless you change it out to something like this. Um, like I said, those are like three or four dollars a piece. They come out of scanners and the whole nine yards. And some of you probably ask, <clears throat> on the scanners, can I change the frequency? Or can I utilize a crystal out of a scanner and use it to transmit and receive on? Yes, you can. What makes a scanner different from a radio is obviously scanner you can only, it's only the circuitry is only designed to receive signals on those frequency bands. These are designed to receive and transmit. This is actual radio. Okay. Uh, would be kind of neat if they designed something like a transceiver scanner, which is instead of having a radio that you have to program through a DOS prompt in a computer, you can have a touchpad keyboard to program the frequencies automatically, which some of the higher end digital trunking scanners use that type of interface. Um, very, very expensive, up in the thousands of dollars range on some of those. Uh, there's something there's something about antennas that I wanted, I wanted you to also see. See, this is a little, this is a stubby antenna. If you look real close, you got some cracks in there from wear and tear. And all this in that antenna is basically a, a copper spring coil that goes to a screw on terminal. If you have a cracked antenna like this, um, you're liable to get more interference and more static because this rubber material somewhat keeps interference out unwanted signals and things that the radio would normally not pick up with a cracked uh, with the cracked coating on here it will damage uh, basically the way that the radio or scanner receives just depending on what you're using. 
Um, like I said, you can get these on eBay for like 40 bucks. It's not too bad. Uh, do you have to have a license to transmit on these bands even though that you are using the radio? Or that you've bought it and that you know how to program it? Yes, you do. You do not have to have a license just to select the channels, the police band, and then fire just to receive, because you can set those to receive only. But when you start adding the transmit function to those channels, which is very easy, you have to have a license. You have to have a federal communication license to be able to do that. Because if you don't and you get caught, I mean, there's a lot of different fines. You can go to jail, so on and so forth because technically you're not supposed to be on those bands. Uh, this is why most of these radios are not sold to the public. However, eBay and online stores make it easier to do so. Now, you can buy a Radio Shack, an amateur radio. It's similar to that, but it's in a smaller format, and it covers a broad range of frequencies. But it is within the legal limits of transmit power. It's only 700 milliwatts. Uh, a lot of people have read reviews are unhappy about that. It's only 700 milliwatts because even if they wanted to transmit, let's say on the ham radio band, they cannot do it successfully as far as sending or transmitting their voice out because it's just not strong enough, the transmitter itself. These right here, however, or four and five watts, and if they go through a repeater system, they go a lot further. And keep in mind, if you work for a uh, fire department, police department, or EMS, the range of these radios are, are probably only about three to five miles by themselves. You have to program the repeater, transmit, and receive function in those radios to utilize the repeater system you're on so that you can go longer distances. With a repeater you can access 20 mile radius or more depending on the power of the repeater and if it's a digital trunking system you can go a lot further. In this area what they're trying to do is they're trying to get every department around here in the area uh, even within a two, three hundred mile radius. They're trying to get us all on a digital trunking system. That way, with a digital system, we're able to communicate, and if we're like in an emergency crisis, we're able to communicate and call this department without any problem. Instead of having to call them up on the phone saying, we need your help here, our radios and our dispatch systems will easily be able to accommodate that and be able to do that with no problem. And keep in mind that the digital signal goes a lot further. Uh, uh, it's very, very private. A lot of the digital trunk systems are going to be encrypted. Uh, systems now are so they use a similar uh, certificate key like you would use in a computer system to identify each radio and the trunk system. And uh, the nice thing about trunking in general is, especially when trunking was first invented, back when you had analog trunking, it was designed so, let's say if you had one officer that was transmitting on the channel, and the other officer that he's talking to would transmit on a different channel, and then when that same officer transmits again, he's on a different channel, and what that does is it keeps the radio traffic from being congested because on conventional systems, you only be utilizing one frequency at a time. With trunking, whether it's digital or analog, you'll be using several channels at different times, and that way, uh, this officer can get a hold of dispatch while this officer has to call uh, another officer for help or whatever. They're able to do that uh, at a more efficient rate and without dealing with radio congestion in an emergency situation. Now, a feature that all these radios have, this 